Okay, so here we are, and uh, I've sourced a few components. Just had to go through my my cupboard here and uh, pick some stuff out of the junk box. So we've got a couple of resistors, um, just a couple of uh, carbon standard carbon resistors, and a couple of capacitors. So uh, we are pretty much ready to go. Start populating the board. Um, looking at the looking at the circuit diagram as we go. So you can see we've got a couple of resistors, we've got a 1K and a 10K. Uh, there's a 10 microfarad, 10 UF capacitor. Um, there's a smaller 10 NF capacitor. Just I think that's just a bypass cap and an LED with a resistor. I'm probably not going to use the resistor because I've got some LEDs which are designed to run off 5 volts. So they actually have an internal resistor built in. It's kind of combined. So that'll be the only change, just because I've got them on hand. If I can't find them, then yes, I'll put the I'll put a standard resistor in, and we'll uh, we'll do it this way. And uh, when you power this up, I'll probably run it on about five volts or something like that. Um, the LED should flash on and off. That's really what we're aiming for, right? So first things first, you'll notice that um, let's tackle a few of the uh, the wire links. Pin six and pin two need to be shorted together. Uh, and also pin uh, pin 4 and pin 8 they need to be shorted together as well so there's two shorts to do is that one and 6 and 2 so let's do those now so what I've got is just some standard hookup wire um, not not stranded it's uh, it's a solid um, single stranded if you like and all I tend to do is I just strip it there you are and we can use this for interlinks, which is what we're going to do right now. You can buy wire which is already like that on a reel, and you, you know you don't actually have to strip it. But I just use anything I've got on hand. Okay, so basically now we're going to go for a short between. Let's do the four and eight. So if you look at this, I'll actually it might, it might be better if I draw this down. Uh, Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's the key slot on the top. So imagine that's the chip. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the pin number. So four and eight, we need to short, uh, if you like, that pin to, uh, to that pin like that. So what we're going to do is have... Um, a wire link from that pin and if you if you remember the uh, the Vero board has continuous copper tracks so we only need to actually connect up to that part there if you like if that's clearer so we're going to go from a wire link from this little bit of copper track up and then the Vero board copper track will do this part and then we'll have another mini wire link coming down to pin 8 so that's a wire, that's a copper track, that's a wire link, and there's a little bit of copper track at the bottom. And that effectively shorts the two together. Okay, so let's do that now. After a while of using VeroBoard, that feels a little bit complicated. You kind of get used to it after a while. You start to visualize where your links are going to go and where your tracks are going to go. So you just sort of get used to it. So anyway, here we go, pin four to pin eight. And I'll show you this uh, better in a moment. Okay, so if you can if you can see that, I need a close-up lens, don't I? <laughs> um, yeah, can, I don't know if you can see that, but the I've now got the little wire link in here. Yeah, that's the wire link there. So it's pin four coming through the wire link along the Vero board here, and it's going to come eventually down to uh, to pin eight. So we'll just go ahead and do that. So the first thing is we'll solder that link in place. When you put the wire through, just give it a little bend at the very end, 
and that holds it in place so the wire doesn't fall out. Just give it a little a little bend. Okay. Let's solder that. Take some very good fine component snippers, side cutters if you like. I got these from a craft shop, but you can get them from any electrical shop like uh, electronics places like Farnell, RS, anything like that. Well, what you really want is something with a really good fine tip on so you can get right in. Um, small ones are the best. And snip off the, uh, the legs, you know, the excess wire, just snip it off. But it really means you can get right in. Uh, big ones are just no good. And they need to be nice and sharp as well. There you go, that's our first link in. And there uh, on the board, so I'm just going to tie that up slightly because I wasn't concentrating. So there you go. Push it in and snip it. There you are, so that's now on. Uh, yeah. If you can see that, there's the wire link in there. So now we'll need to make another two um, links. Get some more hookup wire. And what I'm doing now is the top right hand corner connection, which is uh, connecting pin eight. And again, just give them a little, a little twist to stop the uh, stop the wire falling out so you can move it around solder it in place snip it off okay so now we've got uh, now we've got two wires in place we've got um, the left hand side wire and we've got the top right hand corner wire there as well okay so that's pin 8 connected down to pin 4 so that's the first that's the first connection done so the next one is uh, 48 is done the next one is um, 6 to 2 let's go again And sometimes you just kind of, you know, you can, if you, when you get used to using the board, like I said earlier, you sort of get a feel for where things have to go. At first, if you're just starting out and you're trying it, then, you know, you might have to experiment a little bit and just sort of decide where you're going to put the links, you know, but after a while, it, it, you know, you get used to it. You start to visualize it. Um... There's probably some fancy software out there or a website which will take your schematic diagram and convert it into uh, a Vero board layout. I think I've seen something like that before. Um, yeah, hang on a second. That's in the wrong place. Let's go on to pin two. That's it. Swallow so that. I would normally take a little bit more care than what I'm doing here, but just trying to get things done and not mess around too much for the camera. Okay, that's down to there. So I've connected pin um, two. And uh, that's gone down to a lower track underneath the chip. So we're going to go that way and up to pin, uh, up to pin six. So I need another link. So 
So I'm going to go from that lower track, which is underneath the chip, up to pin 6. Okay, pull that through the board and then just give it a little a little twist just so the wires don't drop out and solder. Apologise if you can't see very well. And because we cleaned the board earlier on using the rubber, um, it solders really well and quick. You know the flow. The flow is very fast as soon as the iron hits the uh, the copper track with the uh, with the solder and the flux in it. It runs very quick, so you're not messing around. You're not burning the board, or you haven't got smoke coming off it, and that kind of thing. Right. So that's it. So basically, that's now connected pin two. Goes down to this lower track underneath the chip, and then it comes back up again on the right hand side here. Uh, to pin six so that's the two links done right so who's next so two and six what I'm going to do now is save some time I'm going to plop in the other components and uh, and we'll come back in a second when I've got all the parts in and here we are back again and through the magic of camera um, we now have a fully populated board what I've done is I've put on the uh, an LED on there and uh, get some light I've got an LED on there um, and hopefully that will flash on and off <laughs> capacitor uh, I've put the 555 timer chip in the holder the correct way around using the key slots at the top to indicate pin 1 at the top left I've got the another few components here I've got some capacitor I've got a capacitor there and the two resistors which are on the diagram there as well I've also connected um, a couple of wires I've got a, a blue for negative uh, red for positive so that's basically the populated board um, on the back you can see all of the solder points and um, basically I've got a little bit of board left here I could have cut that off I've could have made it even smaller but I've just left it so it doesn't really matter uh, for, for this purpose but you can trim it right down once you uh, once you're finished you can look at the board and you can assess well do I really need this PC and you could just chop it off if you want to make it smaller or you, you could put a, a couple of bolt holes through there so you can bolt the uh, the board down in a little project box or a case if you wanted to do that or a panel maybe even so anyway let's go moment of truth <laughs> so uh, that's the actual board uh, with an LED on it and what I'll do is I'll take the light away a little bit so you can see if this is going to work the other thing is I'll show you the uh, the power supply I've got a power supply here and we've got it set to 5 volts which is fine I think the chip goes up for about 12 volts or something that goes quite high but um, I'm not going to do that uh, you can check the specification sheet for the NE55 timer and it'll tell you what the uh, the supply voltages are but I just happen to know through experience that 5 volts usually works alright and I've got a current limited as well in case there's any problems it'll actually kick back and reduce the uh, the current so that's basically what we're doing here okay so here's my fancy switch <laughs> crocodile clip with the positive on it let's give the board some power and there you go Hurrah! <laughs> As we see in the technical industry. Um, it's flashing a little bit fast. Um, probably about, a, I don't know, 100 milliseconds or something like that uh, duty interval. But um, as you can see, it is actually flashing. That's exactly what we wanted to see. Um, if, you wanted the, um, if you wanted the LED to flash at a particular rate, you look at the uh, the circuit diagram. It's basically the um, the time constant between the uh, the capacitor and the resistor network there. And there's a little formula for the NE555, which and it's all over the internet. And you could actually figure out exactly what components you need to put in for any particular speed. Like if you wanted, say, a one second flash, because that's a little bit that's a little bit too fast, really. It's good as a warning indicator. Warning. Yeah. Um. So you know. But if you wanted it slower, 
Um, you could increase the capacitor value from 10 microfarad, possibly up to 100 microfarad. That would probably slow it down by 10 times. Or you can increase the um, the, resist the resistance values. There are formulas that you can use uh, which tell you exactly how to calculate the speed. I didn't bother doing that. I've just got that off the internet and I thought I'd put it together and uh, just see if it flashes, basically. So there you go. Nothing too scientific. And there you go. So that's our any 555 timer. It's driving a 5 volt LED. 5 volt LEDs are different in that they have a built in resistor, um, which you know limits the current that flows through the through the LED. And if you, can you see that flashing OK? Yeah, I hope you can see that anyway. It's a bit, it's a bit quick. Um, and that's handy um, because it means you don't actually have to have the uh, the series resistor um, for the LED. Normally, you'd always have a series resistor with an LED if you run it on 5 volts or higher because otherwise you would destroy the LED. It must have that as a current limiter. But like I say, this particular LED, I bought a box full of them um, for a job I was working on and uh, I've got loads spare. So I've just put that in and it saves us putting the resistor on the board. It saves a component, basically. Um, so there you go. Um, I hope that's given you a nice little overview of Vero board. And that's a nice little starter project. I'll take some close-up pictures and uh, put that into the video as stills. Um, and then, you know, you can have a, a nice close look at it and, uh, and see it that way. Uh, I want a fixed camera on a tripod at the moment with a fixed lens. I don't actually have a zoom on this, so... I'm just going to leave it there and I'll show you some uh, some stills at the end of the video. I hope that's given you a nice little appreciation for VeraBoard, sort of things you can do at home. It's not difficult to do. Uh, give it a go. The parts are cheap. And um, all you need is a, you know, a decent solder line with a, with a, uh, a nice fine tip on the end of it. Um, some good quality, best you can get, um, side cutters or wire snips, what are you going to call them? I got these from a craft shop. I think they were about eight pounds. These particular ones are about eight, six, eight pounds, something like that. Um, you can get super professional ones that cost about 30 or 40 quid and they last longer. Um, but I tend to just use these and if they break, it doesn't matter. I just get another pair. So you don't actually have to spend that much money. Okay, so thanks very much for watching and uh, um, good luck with your, your home construction projects.